This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one minute at a time, back with Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Thanks for having me as always, Michael. Appreciate you. Yeah, so one of the things that I think uh, sometimes gets missed uh, or misunderstood is the economy could be weakening, falling into a recession. However, the stock market could be going up. Yeah. How is that possible? It's, it, it's tough. It's tough to think about the fact that the economy is weakening and therefore corporate profits are going to come down because there's not as much demand for their goods, but yet stocks can do well on the other side. So I think I'll like explain it this way. There's two different camps to look at. Like one, do we think that things are currently in a recession and coming down the trough? Or is this like, we're still going into recession and this is just a bear market bounce. And so honestly, I think what's going on right now is a bear market bounce. I think that we're still in for going back towards lows, if not potentially even touching new lows. And I think the market will chop sideways for a little bit of time. But it's funny, when you look at things from a really broad standpoint, when a recession's coming, it's not to say necessarily that you need to all of a sudden pull all your money out of the market. If that was the case, you needed to do that seven months prior. Yeah, seven months prior. The, the, right. the market is what you call a leading economic indicator, right? So the stock market historically has hit its peak seven months prior to the economy beginning to contract. Right. So seven months prior to the economy starting to move into recession, you see the stock market peak. And then the funny thing is, is usually a recession lasts kind of that eight, nine month ballpark. But the last six months of that, the stock market's going back up. Yeah. So once the recession actually hits, you generally get about three months on average of the market continuing to go down and then it bounces and the economy continues to sputter and contract for six months as stocks go back up, anticipating the other time, the other side of the recession beginning to hit. Yeah, I have a, I have a real life example, right? I was an accountant, uh, my first you know job out of school, general yep. ledger account, moving numbers around. And here's a real life kind of dichotomy, right? You're at a company and uh, it's a bad quarter and you have to announce layoffs. Right, you're going to lay off 10, 12 percent. You do that on the earnings call, and more often than not, your stock's up afterwards. Right, right, right. So you announce layoffs. Your headcount's coming down. Um, but your margin probably gets better, right? So these, it's just one of those things, right? The stock market is not the economy. The economy is not the stock market. The stock market is forward indicator. Oftentimes, bad employment news at a company is good for the stock. It's just. I get it, right? People are like, oh my God, they just laid off 10% 10 of their employees. How can their stock go up? Well, they just took out a lot of fat. So, right, exactly right. And a lot of times, you know, like it or not, when these, you know, economic cycles get long in the tooth, there is a lot of fat. There's a lot of people on the payroll that, you know, I heard this stat in in business school and and it shocked me because at that point I was not fully in the workforce yet. Said, we know this guy was the CEO of a company, of a high powered company. And he said, we know that we get our employees' attention one third of the day. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, we know we get productivity out of them one third of the day. And he goes, when a recession hits, that one third number goes up and it's either forced to go up or it goes up out of fear, whatever it is. They know at that point they need to start working or they know that they just got trimmed or their friend just got trimmed and they need to take on that work at that point. So I was absolutely shocked. And then when I got more involved in the business world, I looked around and I was like, you know what? They are screwing off a lot. And I am screwing off at times <laughs> a lot too. Like, you know, lunches do take 45 minutes and how I'm only here for how many hours? And we have bullshit meetings for two hours of the day and yeah. all this stuff. You're like, wow, that's actually not that far off. Yeah. Yeah. So again, folks, a bit my there's a lot of pain coming, right? Powell told us this back at Jackson Hole pain is coming. We're now starting to see it. Uh, I think we're going to start seeing it in the employment numbers. We get the jolts report tomorrow, which ought to be interesting. Last month, we saw what 1.1 million openings vanish. Yep. That will be interesting. That actually is the last employment report before the Fed decision. So they'll have that if they don't have it already. Thursday, we get weekly unemployment numbers, which have been trending low. They've got to go over 300 or 350,000 to get the Fed what they want. And then Friday, Friday, we get the jobs number. How many jobs were created in October right now? The forecast is 200,000. So we're still, we're still growing. So lots of stuff in employment. I, 
I think the jolts report, so the job openings report, is the best forward-looking indicator because I that's agree. what's yet to come, right? So are jobs open and available to be filled? Now, I'll talk out of both sides of my mouth because the other side of that is I also think there's a little bit of BS in that because I think that people have jobs out there if they were to get the absolute perfect candidate that they would you know, take them. But at the end of the day, that job is not really looking to be filled. But I think the rate of change, the direction of the JOLTS report is the most forward-looking indicator when it comes to the labor market. And the labor market in its totality is a rear view indicator, right? That is the most lagging of the lagging indicators. Stock market's the leading economic indicator. We talked about that. The lagging economic indicator is absolutely the labor force. Yeah, there's a lot of talk, again, because the Fed is very focused on the labor market. The labor market is part of the services component, services, wage inflation. Yep. It's it's 60 some odd percent of CPI. That's that's their concern. So there's a lot of talk about the Fed looking in the rear view mirror, right? Uh, Danielle DiMartino Booth talks about it, driving with the rear view mirror. Um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. The Jolts report tomorrow will be market moving. I think the jobs number on Friday, uh, again, good news is bad news. Right now, the expectation is 200,000. Yeah. I think it's going to disappoint. Uh, and if it does, I think the stock market goes up. Again, bad news is good news. Good news is, right, we get 250,000, I think the stocks go down. Because it's like, <laughs> oh, God, he's got to bang us with 75 again. This is a wild world we live in. It, it, it's so true. It, it really is. And what I'll be interested to see is when you actually look at the employment numbers, what's going on the service side? So you've seen service side continuing to add to employment because people are still out and restaurants are still full, you know, and, and you hear all of the numbers coming out from the airlines and you're like, shoot, they're doing a bang up job from a business perspective as well. It's like, when does it start to come in? And you think, and the numbers are showing like, you're not seeing this massive uptick in credit card debt, but what you are seeing is people chewing through that savings account that they had that got added to from the stimulus and that's depleted at this point. So either they're going to st start slowing down, which admittedly isn't the American way. It really isn't. No. Yeah, that or, would be the first time. Right, right. Or you're going to see that they got used to that lifestyle that stimulus checks and whatever else afforded them to be able to do. And you're going to see them take on credit card debt. And that yeah. creates you know, issues down the line to, to state the obvious. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm so glad we get to come back and do this each week together. Where can people find you? Yeah, follow us at Life Goal Investments is the best place on Instagram. So it's at Life Goal Investments. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate you. Appreciate you.